Hello, Tab Nation. It's Tom, and today we're going to be branching out a little bit, um, not doing any kind of coding today, but we're going to be doing hints and tips with Microsoft Windows 10. Now, a lot of these should still work in Windows 11. If they don't, let me know in the description below. I have yet to have my computer supported by Windows 11, so I'm not really sure. So if you guys could help me out, that'd be great. So the first trick I want to show you, this is by far the one I probably use the most, is kind of just like closing out of a bunch of windows. So let me go ahead and open a bunch of random stuff here. We'll open Chrome, we'll open Paint, and we'll just open Notepad real quick. All right, let's just open up Explorer there. That's easy enough. So we have all these windows open, you know, maybe you have a whole bunch and you want to get all of these minimized except for Chrome. You just want, only want Chrome really as an active window. And instead of having to go and click the minimize on every single one, you can just grab whatever program you're in and actually shake it with the mouse. So watch this. And as you see, it just minimized everything except for Chrome. So that's the one I like the most. Now, let's say you just want to minimize everything. You don't even want a single window open. In the bottom right corner of your desktop, let me see if I can get that a little bit better here. There we go. So in the bottom right, right here, you got your little notification thing here. But right next to it, it's kind of like a little tiny box. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, but if you click that, it automatically minimizes everything. And then if you click it again, that little corner down there it all comes back so that's another one that's very useful to close out and get straight to your desktop if you need the next thing we got is kind of like an old school windows menu if you like that the start menu down here you know you're pretty familiar with this i'm sure but a lot of people don't know you can actually right click on it and you get this nice little menu here with a lot of the most common places to jump to in your system I personally use this a lot of times to jump faster to task manager versus having to do control alt shift or control alt delete or control shift escape. I just click here and I use it a lot for run. It obviously has a lot of other different stuff here like apps and features, system, device manager, stuff like that. So that's just kind of a nice way to really jump to something a little bit faster. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to open settings here. This little gear box here. We get this. We're going to go to search. And then we're going to go to searching windows in the little tab over here. Now, by default, this is set to classic, which really means it's only searching your libraries and your desktop on your computer, which is good because it's going to use a lot less of your CPU power and it's going to be faster. But if you really need to search your computer to its full extent, you can always change it to enhance. And this will search every file folder on your computer. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit buried and the classic search is not working, you might want to go ahead and switch this to enhanced and you have a more likely chance of finding those files or folders that you're looking to. But just know it's obviously going to be a lot slower because it's searching everything versus your main areas in your computer's hard drive. And it is going to use a little bit more power from your computer. So you might notice some lag if you're doing any type of heavy program, like maybe you're gaming or something. You might notice a slight lag in your game while the search is happening, depending on your computer. Next is an interesting one, God Mode. This is very useful if you're kind of like in the IT industry and you want to be an explorer and have access really to all its control panels and features. Uh, we're going to go into God Mode. We're going to create a folder that's God Mode. So we're going to do right click on your desktop or wherever you want to put this. We're going to go to New. We're going to create a new folder. And then we're going to copy and paste this into it. So it's God mode dot and just a bunch of gibberish basically to you. I will put this in the description below so you can just copy and paste it. We're going to go ahead and click out. And as you see, it just changed the folder icon. And this is our God mode folder icon. So we can go in there and we're just going to have so much access to so much more stuff than we're probably used to seeing. 
as you can see, there's like everything's in here that you could possibly need when you're doing IT for the most part. I mean, obviously not everything you need, but that is God mode. Uh, like I said, if you're a normal user, you're here just to kind of learn some fun tips and tricks. This is probably not for you unless you're in the IT industry. Um, but that is our God mode folder. Another one I use quite a bit is kind of like snapping windows to fit your screen with two displayed at once. Uh, a lot of people don't seem to know this even exists, but I quite enjoy it. So we're going to use Notepad++ here and we'll just open, oops, we will open a Chrome. So let me just get a new tab here. So I got two windows here, you know, I could sit here and constantly click in between or I can manually resize these or you can just grab one of the windows and you can drag it to the right side or to the left side. And it's going to, as you see, it does a little highlight thing there with half screen, let go. It's going to automatically format the half screen and then it's asking, what do I want on the right side? So I'm going to say notepad plus plus and it's going to auto fit that so now i have those two windows there that just snapped the perfect size for me i can now very easily see both these windows at the same time the next one that's really helpful especially these days when people have gone to work from home you are using your personal computer maybe and you want to really separate your personal desktop from your worst work desktop without having to have multiple accounts well we can create virtual desktops as you see in this picture here i'm just showing that because i'm not sure if that's really going to show up when i do this hopefully it does but down in the bottom left next to your start menu you have this little thing that has basically two little boxes and like a little slider on it it's called task view you're just going to left click on that and you're going to get a pop-up with all your different windows that you got um, as a way to jump to them quickly, but up here you're looking for in the top left what says new desktop You're gonna click that and you're gonna create an entire new desktop and from there you can drag Your windows into that desktop that was up there. Oh, let's go back So as you see right here, I can grab and I can drag this over and now that's on desktop 2 and I can just easily switch between my two desktops uh, another way to switch with the hotkey is Windows, Control, Left, or Right, and that will just jump to either whatever the next one is or the last desktop up is. You can have bunches of them open, you know, if you want one for gaming, one for personal, one for work, uh, you yeah, know, whatever. It's a great way to kind of create different desktops that have different, I guess, themes to them um, based on what you're doing. So hopefully that showed up in the video. I'm not really sure. Now, something a lot of people don't know is if you're in IT, this is probably going to be more for you, but command prompt can actually be kind of customized a bit. Um, so you got this normal, you know, I, I like this because it's kind of like night mode. It's, you know, white text on a black background, but you can actually come up here and right click and go to properties. And in here, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Cursor size. Do you want it to be different when you're in command prompt so you can see your cursor? Uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of different stuff here. You can change the font. You can change the size of the font. Uh, maybe you want this to be a little bigger because it is kind of small. Uh, layout. Uh, my favorite is colors. You can definitely like change like the background and it shows you a little preview here before you say okay which is kind of nice so you can kind of play you get to be like ah, i want a blue background you can change like the screen text to be you know black uh, so let's go ahead and push okay on that and i believe you have to relaunch it in order for it to work yes uh, there we go and as you see there's my command prompt now looks very different so yeah, um, there's also a uh, you know some stuff you can do here too with the terminal. I won't really dive into that. I just want to show you that it exists. You can play around with all the stuff you can want to do. My favorite is definitely the fact that you can change the background color and the font color, and then it displays it before you even try to test it. Just make sure that once you push OK, that you do put uh, restart command prompt, close out that one, open a new one, in order for the effects to actually take place. The next thing I want to show you is how to share pictures or something. Uh, if you guys have an Apple phone, iPhone, 
you've probably, or at least have heard of AirDrop. This is basically kind of the same thing, but with your computer. So the first thing you are going to need to do is actually turn it on by going to settings. I believe it is under system. Yep, system. And then we're going to look for shared experiences, which is just a tab here on the left. And then we're just going to make sure that it is turned on. I can share or receive my device, bleh, my devices only. We're going to say everybody nearby. So we'll just change all that. And then we're just going to open a picture for this example. And up here you have a little kind of like a half box with an arrow pointing to the right. If you hover over it, it will say share. You're going to click on that and you're going to get this pop up. And there's different ways down here to share if you want to do like directly to mail and stuff. But right here where it says we need some more information, it's going to say share right there to nearby and it'll search for devices. I do, I'm do. i using my uh, desktop computer so I do not have a wireless card since I'm hardwired in. So it's not going to show unfortunately. But here it would show a way to share and search for people who are nearby you within Wi-Fi range. Um, and you just kind of basically airdrop it. They'll get a notification on their computer if they have it enabled. Hopefully they don't have it blocked and they'll be able to directly download the picture from your computer to their computer. Another thing I like using, especially if I'm kind of rambling on like I usually do in these videos or other stuff, is a way to type. So on your computer, or sorry, on your phone, you know, I use a lot of times where I'm texting someone, I'll use the voice to text. Microsoft has that built in for you. The keyboard hotkey for that is the Windows key and H, as in horse. So the first thing you got to do is you do need to be targeting a text box. So we're just going to use Notepad here. And you could use like Chrome for the URL or a Google search box, whatever you want. We're going to go ahead and push Control H and we're going to say something and it's going to convert it to text. Hello, this is a test. And I'm going to push Control H to close that out so it stops listening. And there we go. Hello, this is a test. So it's kind of like texting on a phone with the speech to text, which I love. This is a great thing to do. Now, if you do not have that feature turned on, the first time you push Window H, you'll get a little notification bar at the top that says you need to go to Settings to activate this feature. Just click on that box. It'll take you directly to where you want, and there's just a little slider. It'll be on the off position. You click it, switch this off, just close it out, and then push Window H again, and you'll be good to go. Now, if you're taking a lot of screenshots, uh, you're probably very familiar with the Windows Snipping tool. It's, it's a great tool and everything, but let's take it to the next step. With Windows 10, they've actually added kind of a new one called like uh, Snip and Sketch, I think it's called. But we're going to, on our keyboard, do Shift Windows S, as in Sarah. So Shift Windows S, and hopefully this shows up when I'm recording. I'm not sure if it will. But this gives you the ability to free draw squares, rectangles. Uh, you can do free form, that kind of stuff, as you see right there. Uh, I just did a simple thing, um, but it's really cool. It, it's going to, you can click on it. It's going to automatically open this where you can do like, you know, highlighting and stuff, whatnot. So it's kind of a nice slight step up from the one you're probably used to, the snipping tool for Windows 10. It's basically a fancier version, uh, especially with the free form is definitely very helpful. A fun little thing you can also do is if you like emojis, you can always push Windows key and then the period key. And in the bottom right, you're going to get this little menu. You can drag it and drop it to wherever you want. And you get some, uh, you know, emojis, basically like what you would see on your phone. So you can just, you know, find what you want. And I believe you should just be able to paste it. Where did that go? Windows period. There we go. So yeah, um, basically that's how you get those. Uh, there's other stuff like symbols, uh, the old style emojis from back in the day that you used to use. So I'm not sure how to actually get that to copy over. If you find out how that works, let me know a little better. I have never actually used that. I just know it exists. 
So thank you for watching this. This is going to be a part one of a series. This was kind of, we covered a lot here. I don't want to overwhelm you guys in one video because if I throw too much stuff out there, you'll obviously probably forget some of the stuff I talk about in the video like I would. So definitely look out for part two coming soon in the next few weeks with more hints and tips for Windows users. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Definitely hit that subscribe channel. I'm all about making your life easier, automating your job, your gaming, your personal life, whatever you guys see fit for what I teach. Definitely let me know in the comments below if you have any hints or tips that I did not cover in this video that you think should be shared with the world and that people would find very interesting. Definitely hit that like, bell notification so you can watch out for that next one. And I will see you all on the next video. Have a great day.